Start with, I'd like to give you a history on the initiative and the concerns and issues surrounding GMOs that are behind its creation. GMOs are genetically modified organisms. They are also referred to as GE, genetically engineered, or GM, genetically modified. These are organisms whose DNA is manipulated in a way that would never happen in nature. These transgenic plants have DNA from different species of organisms. For example, genes of fish have been inserted into strawberries and tomatoes. I've been strongly opposed to GMOs for a long time. But after Percy Smyzer came to Lopez to tell the story about standing up to Monsanto, I knew something needed to be done. Percy was sued by Monsanto for patent infringement after his canola crop was contaminated with Monsanto's GMO canola. Beyond his story about the strong-arm tactics of Monsanto, he revealed some of the truths about GMO crops and the companies and governments that push them on the public. He talked about the dangerous precedents being set as more and more companies are patenting seeds. He explained that under current patent law, that any seed with these patented genes in them are the property of the patent owner. He went on to explain some of the health problems associated with GMOs and their production. Apparently, farmers in canola growing regions were becoming resistant to antibiotics as a direct result of an antibiotic marker gene used in the creation of GMO canola. He also enlightened us to the use of GMO plants in the production of pharmaceutical and industrial chemicals in the outdoors. There was a lot more to what Percy said, but hearing Percy speak motivated me to educate myself on the issues and dangers posed by the adoptions of GMOs in farming and other applications. With GMOs, we now have plants that require USDA, FDA, and EPA approval for the production and subsequent use. The DNA of these organisms has been manipulated in a way that would never happen in nature, and once this material is released into the environment, there's no way of controlling or removing it. A number of studies over the past decade have revealed that genetically engineered foods can po pose serious health risks to humans, domestic animals, wildlife, and the environment. Human health effects can include higher risks of toxicities, allergies, antibiotic resistance, immune suppression, and cancer. As for environmental impacts, the use of genetic engineering in agriculture will lead to uncontrolled biological pollution, threatening numerous microbial plant and animal species with extinction, and the potential contamination of all non-genetically engineered life forms with novel and possibly hazardous genetic material. There is no coexistence between GMOs and non-GMO crops. There is no safe zone of containment. Since the introduction of GMO canola, in 1998, 90% of the Canadian canola crop, canola crop has been contaminated with GMO DNA. This has destroyed Canadian organic canola growers and exports of Canadian canola to the European Union. There is a bent grass that has escaped its test fields in Oregon. It is now unstoppable as it spreads quickly along irrigation ditches. The EPA has, has had to give emergency approval to use hazardous chemicals to kill it, and it's still not under control. The use of GMOs in agriculture is a continuation of non-sustainable, chemically dependent, and energy-intensive farming practices. The adoption of GMOs consolidates the control of our food supply as farmers are ever more dependent on the costly inputs of herbicides and fertilizers, and they can no longer save their own seed. Producers of GMO seeds claim that GMOs are needed to meet the food needs of our ever-growing population. These issues of hunger and disease, though, are primarily ones of poverty, food distribution, and inequality. These are political and social issues. We presently grow enough food to feed the world. There are better solutions to these problems using sustainable methods, integrated pest management, low input and agroecology farming practices, along with traditional breeding practices based on our ever-evolving understanding of DNA. These are knowledge-based solutions as opposed to costly input-based ones. These low input and sustainable solutions are already proven and do not rely on patented organisms and allow the control of food production to remain with the farmers. A 2002 report by the USDA states, GMO crops available for commercial use do not increase the yield potential of a crop. In fact, the yield may even decrease. Assessment of the te technology lags behind its development Information is contradictory, and uncertainty about possible benefits and damages is unavoidable. 
We are presently being subjected to the largest science experiment ever, which is being driven by corporate profit and not the betterment of our communities. As Albert Einstein once said, we can't solve problems by using the same kind of thinking we used to create them. Most of the EU, Japan, Australia, and Australia have outright bans on GMO, where production is se severely restricted. Marin, Marin, Trinity, and Mendocino counties in California all have similar ordinances. Uh, Marin County, a county that the opposition, opposition stated, has the largest concentration of biotech industry companies in, in not just the United States but the world voted to support the ban. This tells me that many in the biotech industry believe GMOs belong in a lab, not out in the environment. There are several communities in Vermont also attempting to ban GMOs. Washington State was the first state to permanently ban the cultivation of genetically modified fish to protect our salmon. Washington State has also created GMO-free brassica zones in order to protect the genetic industry of the seed industry, which is, I guess this is in pencil, which is one of the largest producers of broccoli, cabbage, and Brussels sprout, Brussels sprout seeds in the world. As I already mentioned, there is no coexistence. Any contamination would destroy the region's seed industry. Skagit, Island, Whatcom, and Sonomish counties have all taken advantage of this. With the support of other concerned citizens, I decided to start an initiative. The result of this process is Initiative Measure 2012-4. The ballot title for the initiative reads as follows. Initiative Measure 2012-4 concerns the growing of genetically modified organisms in San Juan County. This measure would make it unlawful to propagate, cultivate, raise, or grow plants, animals, and other organisms which have been genetically modified and provides for penalties and destruction of such organisms. Should this measure be enacted into law? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. As the title suggests, uh, some people are, seem to be confused by the title. As the title suggests, this initiative, if passed, would ban propagating, would ban the propagating, raising, and growing of GMOs in our county. Uh, it would not have, uh, there, there's an exemption for scientific research within an enclosed lab and medical procedures. Uh, this will not affect products in the store for the livestock feed that people buy at this point. Uh, only people who knowingly and willfully violate the law will be penalized, but all GMOs will be confiscated and destroyed. We now have 120 days or until June 12th to gather 1,560 valid signatures. I would like to get 2,000. Uh, we now have 120 days or until June 12th to gather 1,560 valid signatures. I would like to get 2,000. After the signatures are accepted, the county council can choose to adopt the initiative as written. If not, it will be put to a vote of the people in the next general election. This would be November of this year. The initiative and subsequent petition form were approved on February 14th, two weeks ago. Signatures are already being gathered on Lopez, Orcas, Shaw, Waldron, and San Juan Island. We're off to a good start. Roughly 600 signatures have been gathered already have been gathered already, mostly on Lopez and Orcas. Once more petitions get out on San Juan, I expect the number to rise accordingly. There's much to do, though. I want to make a statement with the number of signatures gathered, and that's going to take more community involvement and education. Then after signatures are approved, we'll have to lobby our county, our county council members to accept the initiative. If they do not approve the initiative, we need to be prepared for the campaign to get it passed on a countywide ballot. With that, I would like to break into small groups. I would like the discussion to focus on the following issues. Strategies for signature gathering, the creation of a pamphlet for both petitioners and the general public, setting up ongoing community events such as movie, movies, evening meals, concerts, and public forums. These can be both educational and fun. And last but not least, fundraising. Uh, there will be a GMO-free San Juan's contact sheet passed around to each table. For those of you willing to help, please include in what capacity. Uh, I'd be happy to, to take any questions, and then I'd like to break off into groups. 